Welcome to the live uh, happy hour again today on Wednesday. This is go live. Yes. Great. So uh, we're going to be starting in a few minutes. Uh, once everyone joins in, we get more people watching us. And then I will be taking on a subject called the guide to storytelling today. So it's a really interesting uh, happy hour that we've got today for all of you. So uh, I'm really hoping that all of you can really tune in, join in to this one. Uh, it should be a fun one. Uh, I'm going to take a lighter note toward uh, storytelling. I have uh, misplaced my uh, co-host today, Sonia, uh, and I'm hoping that she can join us at some point of time. Um, and we will see once she comes back up. All right. Just give it a few more minutes for people to join in. Hi, Nishta. Hi, Rohan. Hi, Rublin. So we're going to we're using a new platform today. So it's supposed to make it easy for me to uh, do these lives. So let's see. I just keep me updated if at any point of time you feel the video is disappearing or the audio is bad. So it'll be good for me to know uh, that we're audible or not. OK, so we're going to get started in a few minutes. Okay, so we'll wait for uh, everyone to join in. We've got a few people already. Hi, Kanchan. Namaste. It's really nice to see you here also. I'm going to try to share this on my Facebook also so some of my friends can join in. Okay, starting the watch party. Cool. So this should be a fun session again, as I said today. Uh, it's all about storytelling. Um, it's going to be something a little different. So yeah, let's see how this goes. I will probably give it another minute or so for the rest of the uh, people to join in also. And then we can certainly start uh, the Facebook Live. Hi, Shilpa, how are you? OK. OK, so we'll probably give it a few more minutes. Um, I see a lot of people have already joined the call. Hi, Shalini, how are you? Okay, let me try sharing the screen also. Okay, so now I think everyone will probably be able to see me as well as my PowerPoint. Uh, let me know if it's uh, not really visible or if it's too small. I will then probably turn off my camera and let the presentation be in full screen. So uh, give me a comment uh, if this is visible. If not, I'll try to move it around a little bit. It's visible. OK, great. That's good. So we should start. Uh, I will just check on Sonia if she's back, or probably we will be starting now. OK, so I think Sonia is having some major connectivity issues, and she's not able to join today. So you, everyone is kind of stuck with me only as the presenter. So again, I will start by welcoming everyone. Welcome for the Facebook Live. Uh, welcome to the Knowledge Happy Hour Season 2. Uh, this is Episode 3. I am your presenter for today. 
and I will be uh, talking to you and taking you through a topic called a guide to storytelling. Uh, I hope it can give you a better understanding of what storytelling is and what is involved in all different types of storytelling. So that's the entire objective of today's uh, session. So uh, without further ado, I will probably jump into this. Remember, you guys can just put in the questions at any point of time during the live, uh, and I'll try to reach out and answer all the questions at the end at certain point of time. And uh, this presentation, which or the session which I'm taking, is more on the comical side. So there is going to be a lot of pop culture references. There is going to be a lot of uh, references about movies and uh, superheroes. So uh, if you are a person who's been quite uh, well versed with these different kind of pop culture elements, you're going to really enjoy this session. I think. Let me just go. Okay, uh, I think Sonia is, it's just not working for her. Okay, so uh, if she is able to join back probably at later end of the session, that'll be good. What I will do is I will um, just basically turn off my camera so that everyone can see the entire slides on full screen that might make it easier for all you for all of you to see it also
Hi everyone. So I uh, just want to oh can't hear audio. I was not even aware of that. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. So let me probably restart this. Give me one second. Okay, I want to check. Can everyone hear me now? Okay, let me just check if the comments are coming up. Okay. I think I'm audible now. Is it, uh, Am I audible to everyone? Okay, great. So I got a yes from Rahul. Thanks, Rahul. Uh, yeah, sorry for that, everyone. I'm just using this new platform. So again, there was a little bit of a goof up there. We didn't know that how this thing is going to be working or not. So I'm just going to roll back because I obviously understand that most of you did not get what I was presenting on. So I'm just going to roll back and restart this a little bit now. So uh, again, uh, right. So today's topic, I'm going to repeat. I don't know how much did you guys get of what I was trying to tell you or not. But today's topic is going to be about storytelling. So storytelling is everything about trying to convey a certain message, trying to convey a certain thought to the uh, audience, to yourselves, or uh, trying to really communicate what you want to say to people via the medium of stories. All right. So uh, most stories, as uh, they start with, always start with once upon a time. Uh, and that's where uh, the genesis of these stories come. So that's a critical way to start engaging with people. So when you start with once upon a time, that's a way for you to get people interested into a story, get them uh, engaged about a particular story. And that's where, uh, even if you look at all the great movies that we watch, they always somewhat start with once upon a time. So look at those Disney movies or the Star Wars movies. They all started with the aspect of once upon a time. So keep that in mind. And today's session is going to be a lot focused about movies, pop culture, and references to those era. Uh, so if you are a person who's really interested in those kind of things, you will really enjoy today's session. Um, OK. Yes. So now let's focus on what storytelling is. So as uh, the definition goes, storytelling is nothing, no rocket science. Uh, the simple definition of storytelling is telling a story. It's the format or the way of trying to deliver a message or communicate a certain aspect of what you believe in or what you went through as a person. But also storytelling has an aspect about engaging your audience. So storytelling has the ability to actually take your audience to a journey. So that ability of taking your audience to a journey, to a message, uh, that's the power of storytelling. And that's what we're going to learn today. Or that's what we're going to explore and understand better today. So uh, when I was referring to the storytelling, I was thinking about where the, this uh, thought or how do I really present the storytelling concept to you. And I really thought about how the best way to really present this is by showing you uh, or taking you all on a journey of all these superhero comics, movies that we've been seeing. So there is this constant thing that we all get to see, all these uh, Avenger movies which have been coming up and all these different comics that come up. They have an ability to communicate a certain story very effectively. So that's the aspect of storytelling that I'm going to use today to really decipher and give you a few ways to understand storytelling. All right. So uh, an interesting thing when I was working on this presentation was I did some research and I found that about 2.8 billion USD was something that was earned by the movie Avengers last year. It became the highest grossing movie uh, of all time. Um, and 2.8 billion is a huge thing. So obviously, these people who are, diff are, are creating or making these different superhero stories or these comic movie stories, they had figured out some kind of a formula which is working really well for them. This kind of a formula that works the, in a way that the audience gets so engaged that they want to be connected to the story. So we're going to try to understand how we take that system and really define it better. OK, so again, I will just take a quick stop and check if uh, I am audible now. And yes, I think finally Sonia is here also. And uh, she's also on the live stream, so she will help me manage some bits of this uh, at some point of time. OK, so yeah, <laughs> thanks, Sonia. And uh, all right, so coming back to the presentation, uh, that's the aspect of uh, these comic movies. That's what they have created, and that's the kind of money that they have made. 
so why are they so good why are these stories so good there has to be something that secret sauce that they're using to tell a particular story right and that's what we're going to try to understand today that's what we're going to try to define today that what are those secret sources or what is that entire secret mix that uh, can be used to tell these stories all right so let's start by learning from the superheroes from the uh, and i can tell you for a fact one of my favorite superheroes has been batman for the longest of time so uh, i'm going to give a lot of references to that um so let's start by learning from what the best superheroes or what these superhero movies have been able to do so the first thing and i'm going to talk about five major elements here of storytelling so the first element of storytelling is shared desires right so everything that starts from a concept of storytelling needs to have a concept of shared desire now i'm going to explain you what shared desire really means so the first thing that you have to think about share when you think about shared desire think about the common aspects which movies have most movies and again this definitely focuses not only on the comic uh, movie genre or the superhero genre actually it goes beyond love is one of the shared desires that showcases in the movie so an example of love in a superhero movie has been superman the love for superman and lois lane that was a, a, a great way or a shared desire that people had in that particular movie so that's one example of it another example of shared desire was loss so batman so we all are quite familiar with batman we've probably seen that we've probably seen what i mean my one of my favorite movies was the dark dark knight series and i really enjoyed that so one of the things that really binds the entire story together that entire concept of batman losing his parents that loss and that grief that he feels throughout the movie that's a critical part of the entire story what they have so that's another example of shared desire the third example of shared desire is camaraderie now for example most of the avenger movies or any superhero movies that you see a large number of superheroes coming together uh, uh, working together that's the aspect of camaraderie that's the aspect of team building that's the aspect of team work that we get to see that everyone has different views everyone has different opinions at some point of time they have in a fight also but it's that spirit which brings them all together that's another form of shared desire so what does exactly shared desire mean so what shared desire really refers to is trying to relate with your audience on what their desires are you before you even get into the aspect of making a story that you want to tell your audience you need to think about what is exactly their desire what is it exactly that they get excited about right so that's the aspect of shared desires so think about that and define or relate try understanding your audience try to create a desire which something you and they share together so you find that common ground you have that connection so for example in in the aspect of superman that love is something shared most audiences who go into a movie will be able to very easily relate with that aspect the aspect of team uh, and and the team spirit which you see in all these avenger movies that's something that you can relate with so that's the common ground or that's the way you find a common ground when drafting or creating a story all right so that's another very important element of shared desire when you're looking at shared desire you also have to look at being human a share whenever you're looking at shared desire it cannot be something which is uh, emotionally disconnected it has to play into the emotions of your audience no audience likes robots except the example i've probably given you right now of terminator and i as i said to you earlier i'm going to use a lot of uh, references of pop culture so this is another reference of pop culture uh, so if you are a fan of terminator and the t800 series yes uh, that was a, a robot which nobody liked at the minute uh, anul schwarzenegger started becoming and showing that emotional side of himself that's where people started connecting with him so it's very important whenever you're writing or creating a story to compel people it has to be a you have to be human you have to play into the emotions all right so the learning number 1 the first learning that we were getting about uh, storytelling is about shared desires uh, that you have to identify that you have to understand your audience you have to think as per your audience and put yourself in their shoes 
and really understand what is exactly that excites them and then work on your story if you are going to work on something which is not the desires of your audience your audience will never be able to connect with you so that's the first and most important learning about creating shared desires the second learning or the second aspect of creating a great uh, uh, movie or the learning that we get from all these superhero movies is having a strong villain this is probably an example of the favorite villain that i've always uh, seen in a movie uh, the heath ledger when he played the joker in the dark knight series uh, it was probably one of the strongest uh, characters i have ever seen being played in a negative role uh, to the point where probably i was rooting for the negative guy more than the positive guy so just that's just me but again the aspect of having a strong villain is very important when you're defining or creating a story so few more examples uh, thanos was probably one of the biggest arch uh, uh, villains or nemesis of iron man uh, superman has his arch, arch nemesis as lex luthor so there's always whenever you go back and see any of these particular stories or any of these great comics also there's always an arch nemesis there's always someone who's they have to fight against so that is very important how much ever the nemesis is important it's also to remember that you have as a as a hero always has some superpowers but to the brilliant or the best of his superpowers there'll always be some kryptonite so i'm using another another pop culture reference of superman here so that's the aspect where if a person does not uh, um, is is able to overcome his villain the villain or if the villain is still weak they can always use the weapon which is against you which makes you weaker right so that's the kryptonite to superman so there's always some kind of an element which you cannot defeat it's very important to have that as part of your story now why do we need a strong villain or why do we need a weapon that can that you cannot overcome or your hero cannot overcome is because when you have a villain your audience understands it your audience takes your side this is the point when you have that villain that's where everyone comes on your side and they are with you to fight against the villain so the concept of the underdog if you look and go through any of the best movies ever uh, created there's always this aspect that the hero has immense powers but there will always be a beating that he takes before he rises to the challenge of defeating the evil so that aspect of rising to the challenge is because they want the audience on their side when they rise to the challenge they want to be seen defeated and weak because people tend to support the underdog always right so that's very important the better the hero can perform as the better the villain is, or the better the villain the better the hero can perform so very important to understand that you need a strong villain so the learning from this element is that when you have a strong villain everyone in your audience comes with you so it's you and your audience versus the villain this is a way for you if you're working and presenting and using storytelling as a presentation format this is a way for you to get your audience on your side this is where they come and become part of your team and then it's them walking with you to defeat whatever is the villain or the evil in your story all right so this is a great way to actually motivate your Uh, audience to come on your side so villains are equally or probably more important than anything else all right uh, now let's go to the third element the third element for any storytelling or the learning that we get from these stories is that there is always a conflict it's a never ending conflict so think about it, every single movie when you see that you never see a a, a superhero just relaxing and sitting there's always something that he has to do some enemy he has to defeat some fight he has to win some way or the other the world is in danger and he has to come and save it that entire concept of storytelling is very critical so there is always a problem which needs a solution so it won't be that fun if you have a a, a comic movie where batman and superman every day just meet for a cup of coffee and have small chat right that won't be the most exciting movie to watch or that won't be the most exciting story to listen to so you need to remember that there needs to be some excitement because the problem that you have to solve that's the aspect of it the world has endless problems and you have to identify what is the problem you're 
your story is going to fight against what is it exactly that they have to overcome that's an element of the entire uh, storytelling also so it cannot be something where it's not a problem there has to be always a problem and there are many of them so you have to identify it now why do you need a problem or a conflict in your story because the minute you have a conflict and a problem that's where the audience starts engaging with you and listening to you starts paying attention to you because that's where they also need to realize that that's a problem that they face also this is why they need to band together and listen to your solution so the important thing is you have to identify a problem but also a problem which they also have in their lives so it makes it much more effective so the learning number 3 from this point is that solutions are great but you need a problem first you have to find a problem you have to demonstrate the problem and then look at the solutions don't jump into trying to find solutions because that won't make it an exciting story you have to create a huge thing which is the problem itself so again we have to define the strong villain but you also have to have a big uh, a problem which the villain is creating or there's a big conflict which the uh, which is there in the story which needs to be overcome so that's the solution becomes much more relevant there so identify the problem and define or demonstrate what the problem is in your story number 4 inspirational figures all right so now that's also a very important element so whenever we are defining or talking about any kind of storytelling you have to understand that the person who's telling it or whatever is being communicated needs to be creating some kind of inspiration something which is larger than life something which is not very basic something which everyone wants to know or everyone desires to be as so that's an element of inspiration uh, figures so for example everyone wants to be like superman because he stands for justice and compassion so that's a huge element about storytelling which he has created for himself uh, may that be for batman the aspect of endurance where he can face any fears the aspect of intelligence that he's brilliant on finding and he's he's been able to create technology for benefiting him because he doesn't have any superpowers so the entire aspect of that and then and another example is uh iron man i mean this is a very famous line which a lot of people like to say who are probably followers of this particular movie that iron man stands for genius billionaire playboy philanthropist so the aspect here is whenever you're trying to create a story there has to be one figure which is the uh, figure which everyone aspires to get to that larger than life figure that figure that everyone wants and desires to be the person who they see themselves being in the future so that's an important element about storytelling you have to create that figure which people desire to be larger than life so learning number 4 out of this is that you have to give your audience uh, a desired state all right you have to give them something that they want to be at so it could be a figure it could be a state of mind it could be a solution any of those things could uh, it could end up being right so important thing is desired state which you can create something larger than life which people aspire to be so that's uh, the learning number 4 of storytelling okay learning number 5 and this is the last learning for storytelling uh, before i start using and summarizing and we will i will try to do a little bit of q and a also so uh, at any point of time if you have questions start dropping them in the comment window and i will try to address all of them um uh, yeah so let's go to number 5 now so number 5 about goals and purpose now every story that you have whenever you create has to have a goal or a purpose i mean if you have a story which does not have a goal or purpose it's really not relevant anymore what's the motto of the story what's the end objective what are you trying to achieve out of that story is something you have to define and communicate to your audience so for example uh, another uh, batman reference so batman's resolve to fight crime without killing so that's one of his mottos or that's the goal of his story that i will do the right thing i will be uh 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 fighting crime but i will not go to the point of killing people i will always try to not kill or uh, harm people so that's his resolve that's his focus that's his story 
Superman, the one which we all surely definitely know, the aspect of their duty. So his duty is to save the world, to make sure the, the world doesn't destroy itself or nobody destroys the world effectively. His entire aspect is keep the world safe. So that's his goal. That's his focus on the story. That's his objective. His entire story are focuses on that aspect. So you need to remember that you need to find out what's the story arc of your particular story when you're trying to deliver it. You need to have that clearly defined so that people can align themselves so that they can understand what's the sense of purpose or what's the sense of the goal that you're trying to achieve through these stories. You need to clearly define as well as communicate that aspect to your audience. All right. So that's the element number five. So what's the learning from element number five uh, to identify the purpose of the story? Look, if you do not know why you're telling the story, you shouldn't be telling it altogether. So it's very important to have the purpose, as I said, clearly identified. Also, the purpose and goal helps you influence the others. It helps you get them into your shoes and see the way you're looking at. It. If you are a leader and you have a bunch of people who are your followers and you're going to be using storytelling to motivate them, you need to have that sense of purpose very clear so that you can influence and guide these people to a certain place. So that's the aspect of storytelling. Also, when you think about a goal or a sense of purpose needs to be defined. All right. So those are the five lessons. Now, I'm pretty sure the way at the speed I've gone at right now, I'm not sure if everyone remembers. So again, another reference of pop culture is uh, time travel. So uh, if you if any of you actually know which movie I'm referring to here, put it in your comment stream and I will try to see how many of you get it right. Um, put it down. I would love to know how many of you know which movie I'm referring to here. This was probably I give you a hint. This movie probably wrote the playbook for time travel for all Hollywood movies uh, in the late 70s, 80s. I'm not sure when it came out, but 70s and 80s it came out. So let's time travel. Let's again understand what were the five points that I was trying to explain you about storytelling. So whenever you're trying to create a story, the first thing that you need to look at is shared desires. You need to have a clear shared desires for your story. You need to know what exactly is people going to be aligning themselves. So understand what exactly gets people interested in. So understand the interest of your audience. The next thing is define the villain. Define who the villain in your story is and make that villain really powerful. Make that villain really strong. Don't make it a weak villain because if it's a weak villain, people won't pay attention to it. You won't get the emotional connect with the people. So it's very important that make sure your villain is really strong. Your villain is right there and your audience unites with you. Look, if it's a weak villain, they'll say, oh, you know, you can fight it on your own. Why do I need to unite with you to fight against this villain? So you have to make it a big thing. The next is once you've got your villain, then you find the problem. Then you find the crisis. Then you find the conflict. You demonstrate the conflict. You showcase that conflict and desire, uh, that uh, entire problem to your audience. That's when your audience understands what the big problem is. And then you work on showing the desired state, the entire aspiration, the larger than life aspect. What can we achieve? What does the audience wants to be? If the audience wants to achieve to be that person who they are talking about, every audience wants to be that hero that is there in a movie. So why does that every person want to be that hero? Because you created something larger than life. You create that as an inspiration for people to be. So that's another important fourth element of storytelling. And finally, the most critical element, the aspect of purpose of your story. You have to clearly identify and clearly define the purpose of your story and then use the purpose of your story along with the other four elements to influence others. You have to create that aspect of influencing people to get them to understand the story, right? So that's the aspect of time travel and that's the uh, simplified way of understanding what um, uh, storytelling is. Uh, there are many ways that you can understand storytelling there are many complicated formulas and systems uh, that you can use for storytelling, but this is probably the basics. If you, if you focus on what is the techniques of telling story first, and you don't focus on these basics of how to create an effective story, you won't be able to deliver it also.
right? So always remember these five points for storytelling. Now, uh, before I open the, uh, uh, I mean, the session for q and I want to give credit and not be sued for copyright infringement. So I want to say all these characters that are referred in my presentation are not by me. They are owned by DC and Marvel and I had uh, got a little bit of credit and inspiration from a blog that I read on High Spark an agency from uh, Singapore. So the credit definitely has to be shared and given to them. And all these characters are from that side. Uh, finally, uh, I want to give uh, and end it by a thank you to Stan Lee, who was the inspiration uh, for all these characters and probably uh, the, the father of the Marvel DC Universe. So um, yeah, so at this point, then we can now start taking some questions. All right, let me see how we can get on to this one. Hi, Sonia. Hi, am I live? Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so great session, Ashwin. And uh, I love the visuals. Where are you, by the way? I can only see myself. Uh, let me try again. As I said, this is amazing. I don't mind the whole screen, but yeah. <laughs> It should have the presenter on the screen than me. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to see how to do this one. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right, here. All right. Here we go. I'm Meanwhile, here. oh yes, there you are. Great. Meanwhile, I'll read all the amazing comments that we have been getting. So Shilpa actually loved all the villains and Joker was a favorite. Okay. <laughs> and she loved the visuals. And uh, Rohan and Roli got the right answer. Back to the future, they gave answer to your question. Uh, Wonderful. Now we have a few questions coming in, and the first one is by Dr. Rashmi, and she is asking, can we have practical day-to-day -day life example for these learnings that the five learnings that you did? Okay, so uh, great question. Uh, let's probably simplify that also, and try to see it if you want to look at day-to-day -day learnings. So let's take a scenario of uh, you trying to use stories to communicate to your audience. And let's take the assumption that you are actually presenting at a particular forum and trying to communicate. Let's take the example of um, climate change. All right. So let's take climate change as a subject which you're trying to present at. So if your objective is climate change, the first thing that you want to do is actually communicate clearly to them that what is the shared desire. So when your audience is there, you need to get to them saying that does climate change actually make a difference to them? Do they really care about it? Do they actually believe that the climate is changing? So that's the first element. You need to define that there is a shared desire that people are keen to know about it. The second element is about finding that bad villain. All right. So we need to find who that villain is. So if that villain is the fossil fuel that is burning or the automobile industry, or if it is excessive use and po pollution that we are doing, or uh, deforestation, uh, there are so many villains. So you have to define what your villain is. Now that's the second element in your story that you have to get. So the villain now here becomes, uh, let's say, uh, the automobile industry. So the usage of fossil fuels. Then we go into the problem. So we have to define what the problem is. The problem is that there are constantly people trying to use cars and there is so much uh, uh, in uh, or ineffective usage of cars that where people don't carpool or people are one person is driving to work or the problem could be saying that uh, in cities like Mumbai and all these places where you have excessive pollution just because of traffic jams. So that could be a problem that could be there. Then you come to that aspirational aspect. The aspirational aspect is, hey, how, what if we can all have electric cars which are actually not uh, funded or, or not fueled by fossil fuels? but is actually fueled by, let's say, wind or solar energy. So that kind of solves that aspect. So that's the aspiration that we get. to. And then we need to focus on the final goal or the purpose. The goal on the purpose of this entire story that you're trying to convey is actually trying to say that there is a better future possible. We need to survive as a human race to progress because if we keep doing the things, uh, well, the earth is not going to survive. So uh, I hope that's an example that I could give you uh, using the five-step uh, process of looking at uh, storytelling. Yes, and you may have to elaborate a little bit more because there's a follow-up question. Like It came yeah. a little later, but I just read it while you were explaining this. 
and Nidhi is asking that if you can just give a little example or she's saying a story with all the five aspects in place, especially with reference to our industry, which is image consulting industry. So can you. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, with reference to the image consulting industry, all right, let me think about this. So, uh, all right. So let's take an example of uh, trainings that you have to conduct. So if you're conducting a training, which is for uh, a, a company, which is an FMCG company, or if it is um, a, a company which is more into, uh, let's say, beauty products. All right. So if that's the company that you're working for and you have to conduct a customer service training for their employees. Now let's understand what the desired goal, the desire or desired focus. The desired focus here is that people want to succeed. They want to get more customers. They want to keep happy customers. So that's the first aspect that you need to define in your story that let's think of a story where you started that we want to achieve great growth. We want to create happy uh, customers. The next thing you want to see is the villain. The villain in this entire story is that it could be, let's say the management. <laughs> it's not the greatest thing to say, but it could be the management that's creating the problems where employees are not able to give the service or it could be the product itself. The product is very bad and that's the villain that is there. The problem could be, hey, it's too expensive. People can't afford it. So that's the next thing that you need to focus and tell your uh, in your trainings that look in a story format that it's not uh, the expense has to be managed. And then finally, you can move into the aspect of saying that how what do we need to achieve? We need to achieve a customer. Wow. We need to not see people complaining about our products and services on uh, Twitter. So that's the third element. And finally, you want to get to the point in your story that let's come together and let's find that common goal of saying we as a company can better or as a company management, pricing products, all of it can come together and we can give the customer word. And on the fly, I can give you that example. <laughs> I can't really think of any other one for the image management industry right now. But yeah, if I have something better than that as an example, I'll definitely share. No, that's a great example, Ashwin, that you gave. And Rashmi is saying thank you so much um, for the answer Ashwin. that you have given. And um, Nidhi is saying, good to see you. <laughs> OK, good to see you too, Sonia. Uh, Nidhi, sorry, I'm saying Sonia. I'm reading that up. <laughs> All right. Um, question that has come next is, uh, this is by Saurabh Jain. And he's saying, what should we think when we imagine a hero? So I'll repeat that okay. again. What should should we think when we imagine a hero? I think it's more from the real life perspective that he's asking. OK, so good point. I think uh, so the hero is not the prime focus of your story. So most likely the hero is the solution. So first, again, don't try to start thinking and focusing or I mean, start developing your story with the hero in mind. What you want to develop your story is first understand the desire. Why? What is the story? The purpose of the story. And once you've got that, then the fourth element, which I mentioned to you is that aspirational aspect. Whatever is the aspirational solution to your problem is the hero. So think about it in examples. Again, going back to pop reference of superhero movies, uh, every single hero is the solution to the crisis, which was there. So if uh, uh, the hero was there, let's say Iron Man, he was only created because uh, he had to counter the villain who was there in the movie. So your hero is somewhat the solution to your problem. So again, when we're using the storytelling in our professional works, we don't have heroes and villains. We have problems and solutions. So your solution typically is the hero. Yeah, that explains it pretty well. Um, okay. I hope Saurabh got his answer. And uh, going forward, we have a lot of questions coming in. So the next one is from Ruja. And she's saying, can you suggest few ways of using the techniques that you um, mentioned? Nidhi just replied, thank you so much for answering yep. that so well. So she got her answer. Um, yep. So Ruja's question back to it again. Can you suggest few ways of using this technique in our business? And again, in image consulting business. So a few ways of uh, incorporating it. Yeah, so I think I would repeat the same thing which I already said, Roja. Uh, the aspect is these are the four steps to develop an effective story. 
so how you utilize it in your business is totally up to you now if you are utilizing it first for your online communication okay so let's take an example of social media communication that you are developing to promote your business now if you are going to be selling your service you can use these five steps to create a story of why a person should buy your service so it's the same thing about storytelling using these five steps to create a story for people to buy so when people think hey you need to create a corporate video or you need to create a video which people watch about your services or your business what should be this video about this is how you develop that video so that's one example second example could be let's say you're working with a client an image consultant a one on one client a personal consultation now this particular person is facing uh, uh, challenges or issues uh, with let's say behavior aspects so uh he could be having etiquette kind of training that you're providing him or it could be public speaking uh training that you're requ uh, required to give this person now if that's the entire aspect can you use storytelling to communicate certain communication techniques to that person so if you have to teach him public speaking one way is teaching the techniques of public speaking the second way is actually making it into a story so people can understand it better and third the most obvious way you can obviously use it in your business also is that when you as a professional image consultant actually conducts training sessions or as a trainer are working take your concepts make them into actually a story so think about that a very simple story about uh, uh, the rabbit and the hare that can be made and made into a uh, your entire presentation can be made into uh, uh, making sure you don't do things too fast and too slow it's all about taking stories and driving them into a presentation to convey a certain So I hope that gives you three examples of how you can start using it in your business. Correct. And if, in fact, if we talk about the, you know, the presentation, and when we make our workshops and do our trainings, we also say that in your sessions also you incorporate storytelling to, you know, drive your point home and just say that this is yeah. what I mean. So uh, yeah. it's a great way in, and especially for us as uh, trainers, as image consultants, I think um, storytelling is one of the best tool to put your message across especially important when you don't have statistics and in image consulting there are a lot of things that we can't support by facts and numbers like why is it important and then you just tell a story and then you have driven the point home so i think it just helps a lot in that to add on to what she said um shilpa said fantastic session and um Jerusha is welcoming me. So, <laughs> right, coming to next question, this is by so Ruja. I hope you got your answer. Moving to Rolly's question, she's asking: Is it important to have a takeout or a moral at the end of the story? Can we leave the reader, audience to interpret and decode? Yeah. So, uh, Rolly, brilliant question. I have to say. Uh, so, I have to answer that in a politically correct way for my presentation today. according to my presentation you need to have a moral or story because again i'm trying to teach you the basics but what you're talking about is leaving the end conclusion open that's probably used when a you become really good at storytelling when you have mastered the aspect of storytelling that's when you can get to the point where you can leave the interpretation of the story to the audience uh, and i'll give you an example i watched this chris hemsworth movie on netflix over the weekend a uh, brilliant movie if you love action movies uh at the end of the movie you see this person uh dying uh, or i mean falling off the bridge and possibly dying but then you also see the last scene is where the person gets up out of the pool and sees a faint image of a person standing now it's left out to the interpretation of the audience to decide which side they want do they want that happy ending or were they happy with the story arc to finish so when you're using a technique to leave your audience to define the ending you have to be sure that that's the objective that you want the audience to be thinking about it after it so if you want your audience at the end of the presentation walking on and scratching their heads and saying okay what happened really and creating that anxiety use the technique but remember you have to really be good at delivering that particular story because it can go horribly wrong also in that way so first timers definitely don't use that technique once you've got better at it you can do and another great movie about that is inception i just love the ending of that top which is spinning i don't know is are they in the dream are they outside so yeah again a lot of pop culture references that's the best one actually to for the interpretation and decoding it in your own way and as ashwin yeah. said don't try it for the first time 
but um, that's a very good way to hook your audiences like you want to you know come back ask for more question that's where you can use it but you need to be an expert in storytelling and you need to exactly leave in the cues for them to like the breadcrumbs you know you say that a trail that you want them yeah. to follow and just kind of come back to you so if you're really sure that you have given the right trail for them to follow then it's all right otherwise it's it can be risky <laughs> uh rahul really loved uh, he said one of my favorite topics and very well articulated so he's liking the whole session roli said that yeah, I, was, I was kind of scared about using so many superhero figures because i just felt i would relate with every one of them but i was not sure if my audience today would be happy to see all these different cartoon yeah, figures yeah. And- <laughs> i think we are getting more audience just because of your cartoon character <laughs> All right, uh, Rohan is uh, no, it's not a question. So Rohan is saying, I would say, movie which told a brilliant story related to image consulting was Memoir of uh, Geisha. Yes, that's a great story, Rohan. Actually, good example. So I just read your message, but yeah, uh, good example, Jerusha. Um, image consulting. I think we can relate to the movie Iron Lady absolutely. And Rohan says, King Speech. Yes, they are all brilliant movies. And um, Ashwin. these are all great right from the story so <laughs> yeah, yeah i think these are all great examples of great movies so i think remember the one thing that you have to remember out of this presentation today storytelling as i said to you is nothing about telling a story there's no rocket science behind that you're just going to be conveying a a a a, fact, a, a series of facts mentioned in a particular logical order to convey someone something so remember that and then keep it simple don't try to over complicate it uh people always focus on and i when i was doing my research about this uh, subject i came across so many different techniques and uh theories and processes of saying false start and mushrooms to uh, theories and uh, butterfly uh, uh, effect storytelling those were all great but that can only happen once you've done the fundamentals of defining your story your story has to be defined in these five ways to make it exciting to someone to watch So think about now as an activity, I would really recommend everyone look at one movie that you loved and one movie that you hated in the last probably six or eight months. Uh, and I'm sure in the last three weeks, people have probably seen more movies than the last six months. But still, <laughs> go back and think about one movie you loved and one movie you hated. And the movie that you loved, look at the five elements that they were able to use out of them, out of these five elements which I've mentioned very clearly. And which out of the one which you hated. what was missing in that movie what is it exactly that you did not like and which out of these five elements was missing so just as an activity you guys can probably try to do that great um just last question so this is from jerusha and if you have more questions please we'll take maybe one more one or two more question uh before we wind up but uh, last question from jerusha would you advise going ahead with the storytelling before we start the training Yeah, I would. Uh, I would definitely say storytelling is a great way to start any kind of training. Uh, remember trainings, uh, and uh, you would remember this from some of your classes which you attended also. The one of the first elements when you start the training is catching attention. So that's step number one when you train anyone, public speaking or training or presentation skills. That's the first thing that you do. That's one or one, catching the attention of your audience. Because most likely when your audience comes into the room, they either uh fiddling on whatsapp they're talking to someone finding their seat uh looking who they know in this presentation and maybe somebody at the back will be actually playing some games or uh doing some kind of uh, nonsense so what you need to do is catch the attention so storytelling is a brilliant way to get everyone quietly in focus before you start on the main topic of your presentation so storytelling can be done but remember when you're using it at the start of your presentation don't make it too long because then people become impatient and then they say okay that's great story but can you now get to the point of why i'm here so just use it with some discretion sonia sonia okay. anything to add no i think you answered that really beautifully and um, just maybe because i had a follow up question for you on that question only that if you can just give everyone like a one on one like you know step number 1 if you want to start using the method of storytelling what would be that first thing that you would advise everyone to start doing immediately so just if you can just give that step 1 for everyone to get started okay so i'll give you step 1 2 and 
okay so step number one <laughs> step number one is uh, if you're going to plan to use storytelling start uh, reading a lot of stories because if you start reading stories you know how to make stories and deliver them also so that's number one you need to start reading stories and not watching movies watching movies can help but actually physically taking a book or an ebook or your kindle and actually reading a story because there's a process which authors have mastered of telling you a particular story so if you are able to read more you'll get better at telling stories so that's number 1 number 2 is when you're going to give a story make sure you make your entire story and deliver it stories are not given as ex tempo there is no effective story that can be given in ex tempo always stories are drafted prepared rehearsed and then delivered all right and third thing i would say is research when you want to use your audience or i mean when you want to use your story use relevant stories don't i mean don't try to use a story just because you have to use one don't try to force fit just because it's fun to start with a story a presentation or it's important and now there's a trend of storytelling in a digital communication so jump on that bandwagon make sure it's relevant yeah so these are three points that i can give you guys that's wonderful really good tip and one question for you ashwin which is from me so now that you are addressing a crowd of image consultant most of them so my question to you is that as an image consultant we work you know with one on one people right so not only from a, a training perspective but uh, do you think that storytelling can be used for you know managing people's image on a one on one perspective like how image consultant can use the aspect of storytelling to manage or uh, build an image for someone okay so uh, it's a tricky question it really depends on your client at the end of the day that uh, is the person perceptive and open enough for using storytelling as a way to learn right so you need to keep that in mind also uh, it's not necessarily that storytelling will work as a medium for training or for coaching every single time um so i would say be careful whenever you're using storytelling for individuals uh it's not a foolproof system uh, but if you're working with one on one clients and you're working on coaching people try using stories which are personal stories so come up with your own personal uh stories about what you've been able to do or maybe stories about uh maybe another client of yours uh so maybe use that as a reference point to build a story so that there is more relatability for people so yeah that i can give you an answer i hope that that kind of answers the question sub what yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> i'll ask you more one at one okay um no worries. we do a lot of rapid fire i don't have a rapid fire for you but if i have to ask you one question <laughs> uh one question what is your favorite story of all time it can be a book or a you know movie anything like a story of all time that you kind of refer back to whenever you're talking about something or i know the answer but i'm just trying to yeah. audience to you know the answer so can you please tell me the answer <laughs> <laughs> okay your one favorite movie of all time which is yeah, the yeah. best for storytelling i was going to ask you something that it it can't be a book because it will definitely be a movie only it will yes. definitely because i don't read that much as much as i would have wished to uh all right so one of my favorite stories for a book or, or a movie um really tough question sonia <laughs> I, i can think of about 20 of the movies which i can answer right now give me top 3 this is the first time i asked a question yeah. at the yeah okay it's a really good question so uh i think uh top 3 with no particular order uh, of preference i would say number 1 would be uh, forest gump uh, i would be probably in the top 3 the second would be uh, shawshank redemption that's another story which i think uh, the way of storytelling was brilliant and uh, the third it's kind of difficult to agree with the third one but uh, a movie which i don't know if a lot of people have watched it but a movie called schindler's list uh that's another favorite of mine so i would say the top 3 movies and again people might judge me on the kind of movies i've just picked no, <laughs> so I shiller gum and all time redemption would be three movies yeah. that i could probably relate with yeah good good yeah yeah that's a good list even i was about to say that you may pick up forest gum and rohan also says for forest gum so <laughs> i also uh 
my personal is uh, this thing, the bucket list, which is really great. So, ah, yes, wonderful movie. Okay, so we have reached. I don't have any other questions from the audience. Everyone is saying super thanks, amazing, great session, cool presentation. Thank you so much. Thanks for the input. Uh, thanks for sharing the knowledge. Uh, Jana is saying thank you, Ashwin for the sharing. So everyone is just loving the answers and the question and the presentations that you gave. Uh, Nidhi Yadav was saying thank you so much for answering that so well. So overall, everyone is just loving. You can take some time later on after the you know session is over. Uh, please go in the comment section and then reply to everyone. Uh, you can interact and maybe if I have missed out by any by mistake, if I've missed anyone's question, Ashwin can answer them for you in the comment section. And, yeah, sure. Uh, if anyone has any questions, you can definitely leave them and I'll be happy to answer them later also. Great, great. So thank you so much, Ashwin, for a wonderful session. And um couldn't hear that. What uh Shilpa, the bits we said the was that Ashwin will answer the call in the comment section if you have any question. All right, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, it was a great session. I enjoyed it thoroughly with the amazing visuals and the graphics that Ashwin has showed, and also the important five learnings, which were really, really important. Shraddha is saying that Kenneth wants to tell Ashwin his favorite hero is Iron Man. And Ashwin also has a very young fan. Um, so he's like a diehard fan of Ashwin. So because of all these cartoon characters, and so I think that's where your inspiration came in. So anyways, thank you everyone for a lovely session and uh, thank you Ashwin for a lovely session and for joining us today. You know we meet for Knowledge Happy Hour Season 2 every Wednesday 7.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time. So yes, we will be coming up with a new speaker next week on, at the same time 7.30 p.m. on Facebook Live. So because you know what, learning should never stop. So we will bring you a new topic and uh, till then, take care and stay safe. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.